18-inch jet and a 14-inch delta, and they're different. Everything on the setup, the same principle is exactly the same on both of them. So once you learn how to do it one, you can do another one. And this one's a third method, and actually a fourth because you have the Carter systems too. Now I'll talk about each one, but first thing is is why we're here. You know, how many people have received the bandsaw that they didn't have to go out to the store and buy? You know, somebody went down uh, through anything from. Uh, a friend, a yard sale, an estate sale, used. or used, or something like that, you know, anything besides brand new, when you get it, you need to check it out, and that's what this is all about. You know, I, I got that Delta bandsaw that I was talking about, 14 inch, and when I got it, I had to inspect it the same way as what we're gonna do on this one. So we're gonna start right from the start on what to do with it. I wanna cover first, we're gonna cover the uses of a bandsaw. There's so many things, that's my favorite tool. You know, I, there is five blades in the shop right now, but I like my bandsaw about the best. And you can use it for uh, ripping wood, making uh, matchbook panels. You know, if you're doing something and you're going to do a cabinet that's like 24 inches wide, you know, you can do, you can uh, resaw the thing there, a board, and then open it up, and that way it's going to be a match panel. You can't do that with anything else, a table saw. Okay. Anyway, you can use it for, you know, Ripping wood is long strips. You can cut them in half, cross cuts. You can do thick wood, thin wood, bevel cuts, and you can use it for joinery, for making lap joints and different things. So it's a very versatile tool. I use it, if I've got to cut small pieces, instead of going to a table saw to cut you know, a section off, I just use a band saw. You, know, you don't need so many guides. If you draw a line and you can look on it, you know, you're good. You know, if, it, if it thing's four foot long, it's kind of hard to look at that and line it up without a guide to go out across there. The biggest thing is your eyes. You know, if you're pushing on that thing and it's four or five foot long and you're trying to get it right down the middle there, halfway through it, your eyes, you, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't even want to blink, you know, when I'm going down there, but you can just stop. You know, a bandsaw is one versatile tool that, you know, a table saw or something like that, you don't stop halfway through the cut. A bandsaw, you stop, ease it off a little bit and just rest for a second. So it's one of the safest tools as far as that goes. Anything rash happens, just stop for a second and back away. Who cares what happens with the blade if you've messed it up? So anyway, so well, one of the first things that we did on here is unplug the bandsaw. If you're doing maintenance, unplug it. If you're going to change the blade, unplug the bandsaw. I have to admit, I don't. My switch, from here to here I measure, it's 15 inches from here to here. If I'm changing a blade out, I'm not going to deliberately go hit here. And I'm not going to accidentally hit here, but mine's, mine is 21 inches away. So this one's closer, you know, it's, it's up to you, but it is safer. I mean, it doesn't take nothing to unplug this here. Mine's a 220 going into a wall, and I don't want to walk over there and do it so I don't unplug it. But, you know, that's up to you. I, I'd make sure you do it as safe as possible. What we're going to do is, starting from the beginning on this, I'm just going to open up the door so you can see what we've got. And, okay, you, uh, a lot of people tell you the first thing to do is remove the table. <laughs> and you can, <coughs> the mechanism that's on the top here is identical to the one down below. Now, uh, you remove the table, you can look at everything nice and easy and it, it's not a problem at all. But on some of them, like mine has got a Craig fence on here which mounts on here and there's another one on there. It is hard to remove that table because I don't have enough clearance. This thing sticks out farther here. Once you loosen it up, you can't take the thing and rotate it and take it off there like you can this one, you know, without a lot of, uh, a lot of work. This one comes off really easy. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the table on here just so you can see it. Okay. Now this holds your two sides of the table together, you know, keeps it level. And so you want to remove that first because you're going to bring the blade out through here. Ian, you want to take off the bottom uh, parts on there? Yeah, it, it's tapered. It's, it's tapered, it just goes in. You just you just kind of twist a little bit, it stays really good. And that does align good. And the more you push it in, you know, I guess would hold it straighter. But and what's the purpose of that, 
Well, you've got a big split in the table. Right. Okay, the, the, that helps alignment to keep both pieces aligned up together. Okay, it's all the way off? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, we're gonna lift it up, turn it. And slide it out. And slide it out. <laughs> yes. But see, the blade would, would have broken, so that's why they're- Well, you can do it in either order. That's why I wanted to have it up here so you can see this first. Now, there's different features on this bandsaw that's different than, you know, the tension release on here is different than majority of them. I guess a few of the new ones are coming up with this here. Can you take the camera over to the other side there? Okay. You ready? Okay. Now this position, has got three positions on here. The upper position is the full tension. That's how you use the bandsaw when you're running. And when you adjust the, the bandsaw blade for tension and everything, you put it up in that position. When you're not using it, you take it and put it down in the next position, and that just takes pressure off the blade so the blade is not pushing so much on the wheel. You know. And then when you get ready to remove the blade, you just take it one more step and come all the way down. Now that loosens the blade, not enough to take it off, but it loosens it and then you take the tension off to take it off the rest of the way. That's a feature that was on here, but I wouldn't swear that I like it much. We just wear it a lot. The first day we got the bandsaw, we put this thing on here and we put it right up here. Looked like that was where, adjusted the bandsaw, got it all the way up and we went to put it, later we had to put it in an upper position and we broke the whole arm off. And I figured that was kind of a defect. They needed to have like a warning or something like on there. I talked to two people today, did the same exact thing as this on their bandsaw. And the people of the company says they don't see the problem. If three out of three people had that problem, it's a problem. No, go ahead, stay over there for a minute. Okay. When you go to adjust this on here, okay. If you look on here real close, uh, so he doesn't have to come back here. Focus in right in here if you can. Right there, okay. When you go to adjust the tension, there's a, there's a washer on the bottom of that mechanism there. When you go to adjust your tension, if you look at the scale, it's a one eighth, you know, one quarter, three eighths, all, all the way up on there. And there's a washer on there. That washer that you're lining up there, that is what you use for a gauge. Some of them have a gauge that's on there. It's like a bar that goes all the way up and down, you can tell exactly where you need to adjust the adjustment at. You know, that, I was just trying to show you this so we don't have to come back around here with a camera afterward. Okay, you can see the, uh, there's a spiral going across up here, but on the bottom of there, I'm not sure if you can catch it on there. Right in here, there is a washer on the bottom. I might be past the point where you can see it. Yeah, you can't see it now. There it is. No? Not yet. That's a coil. There it goes. Take my word for it. There's a washer on the bottom. Oh, no. Okay. You'll never know. Come up and look at it later. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's not important. Anyway, on mine at home, uh, mine's a Delta. It has the same setup. So if you look at it, I think maybe a rigid, there's probably about five or six brands and stuff all use that same exact mechanism. You know, the ones that are 20, 30 years old and the ones brand new still use that same setup on there. You know, my jet is different than, than that. But anyway. It, I just want to show you how to do it so once we hit that on there. Okay, first thing we're going to do is remove the blade. I've already backed off all the rollers and stuff. That's a step we we're going to do before we install the new one, but I want to do it for now. And then we're not loosening up. And Ian's going to show you how to fold the blade. He took one home and practiced it. I'm going to use gloves. <laughs> well, no, that, that's a great way to do it. Now, this one, the teeth are not all that big yet. You know, so you don't have much problem with it. Can you get that good? Yes? No? Because I'm not seeing it there. I'm <laughs> okay. Yeah, all right. So I'm gonna step on this here so it doesn't just kind of flop around whenever I turn it. And I'm gonna turn it once and then turn it again and then kind of just fold it in and <laughs> not work at all. So how not to do it. You go down as you're turning it. 
go down by. You go down. 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 Now. Okay. Let's let's try this. This one's bigger, and all the teeth are ground off of it. So Penny wants to try it later. You know, you're not going to hurt yourself. I do when I'm using my other ones. I wear gloves with it every time. You know, those little ones I don't worry about that much, but. This is the standard one that I have on my jet. And with three teeth per inch and the blades are that much, you know, you want to go ahead and do that. And while, hold on just for a second. You got on it? Okay. I want to show you on here, the deeper part of this blade here is called the gullet in between the two points. And when we get ready to go on there, we want to have the wheel lined up to this part is what we're going to line up as the center. So when they said to put the blade on the center of the wheel here, they're talking about where that gall part is on the center, not flat on the blade, and that thing is not going to touch into the blade. So that is where it needs to be at. The gullet is in the center of the wheel, you just saying? Yeah. Yes. Okay. The gullet itself is in the center of the wheel, not the blade. So, hey, we'll come back to that when it comes time for that. Okay. I'm not going to do anything. There's no teeth on this one, but I'll put this on anyway. Yeah, I, I was sent there yesterday and deliberately ground everything off of here. Now, if you hold on to it, there's a lot of methods of doing it. I hold it with my hand out like this, and I turn it, and I turn it again, and at the same time I'm pushing it down, and it folds up. Yeah. But you don't, when you, like, when you code it, you put it on there, you do it. And a lot of people take the blade apart, they just take and kind of toss it. But, like right there, you know you're going to get caught over here. You look at the outside parts, and the big thing is control. You know, like any tool, if you control what you're doing when you run something through a table saw, if you just run it through and you're not putting up pressure on it, there's a good chance it's going to bounce on you. So if you use this, the bandsaw or anything else, you have to control the stock, whatever you're doing, the same thing as this. So like I said, I'll have this up here if anybody wants to practice later. I put my foot on it, turn it once, and then I grab it, turn it again, and just push down. Now when you have the great big teeth on there, they do tend to catch each other. You'll have to bounce a couple times to get it around to where you're at. So this is over there. Let's set these aside. We will put that one back on. Okay. You're going to do it now or wait? No, no. We don't need it for a while. Rob, are you going to talk any about what selecting the band? The the, the, yes. Well, why did you be? Okay. Yes. When we get to the blade itself. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about the types of uh, methods you have. These are rollers. You have rollers, you have cool blocks. Can you find one of the pictures on there that shows the cool blocks? You might have to put them all up on the screen and look at it. Okay. But the only thing, the purpose of this is going to have, when you put the blade on, you want to be able to catch or, capture it right between there. But before we go, that's a stabilizer. There you go. Yeah, but we don't you see had it. I don't see that on the <laughs> now, he, no, he's, he's going, oh, okay. okay. No, the cool blocks. Yeah, that's, that's the one, but we need to bring it up to the screen. Or we could point the projector at. Point the camera at this monitor. No, it wouldn't do any good. Yeah, 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 yeah you're right. Well, that's what I'm going to cover here in a second. Okay, the cool blocks is nothing but, you have two little squares on there that you put the blocks over there. Uh, the biggest advantage of the cool blocks, if you're using a small blade like quarter inch or less, you can actually capture it within the cool blocks all the way. When you're using these, you've got rollers, you only catch it so much on the blade itself and hold it in there. It's got to hold it in between so your blade is not twisting. And I'll show you all that when we get ready to install it, but I just want to show you the different systems. You know, these rollers are on, most of them that are coming out nowadays. A lot of the older ones had cool blocks. There was, there was advantages. If these things seize up, you're going to change the blow, these out, you're going to have to pay for new rollers. The cool block itself, you can use like a lignum vitae, uh, different materials, the hard materials and kind of oily, and you can put them in there. You can make your own cool blocks. So or you can, oil. yeah. And you can, uh, you can spray them with PAM or something like that and lubricate them. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. You can't with these. You know, when these go bad, 
you know, you can use a silicone lubricant to loosen them up. Mine are a lot bigger on the ones here, and I could barely move the thing, and I put silicone lubricant, I go, I should have done that last year. But, okay, one thing I want to talk about before we get into any of that is when you get to this part. This is the part for your inspection. You got the blade out, you can see the tire, you can see all those different things. The first thing you want to do is clean everything out there. Take a brush, take an air hose, you know, which, you know, you blow it off. You got to get it all there and clean up there and so you can see if there's anything wrong. You check all your hardware. The wheel itself, this tire that you can't really see very good from these angles, but that's a big thing to inspect. You can actually take warm water with like a dish soap or something like that on a cloth just to clean it up enough to get the thing clean. It's kind of hard to see when there's something wrong with, it, with the belt on. It's hard to imagine that this was in this shape and I could not see anything wrong with it. It was broke just like this. I turned on my saw one day and I was cutting something. All of a sudden I heard a terrible rumbling noise. And I stopped and I opened up the covers. I looked at it. I didn't see anything wrong. And then I went and tried again. I did it again. I go, what is this? And what happens is this thing is around the wheel touching each other and the band that saw blade itself was holding it together. So about five times I did it and finally I went and did it and I had to take the blade off to find it was bad. Now you have two different type of uh, belts on here. This one is polyurethane. The original one was polyurethane. The one I put on it was polyurethane. If you've got it on there and you have a rubber belt which you have the glue on, a lot of people will think, well I'll take it off and change it. There's no reason to. If there's nothing wrong with the belt, you have no advantage to having that, the polyurethane, over your rubber belt. You know, rubber belt's got, got a curve to it and the way it fits on here. You know, you heat it up. We had a really good video for that that uh, I did with Dale and then we recorded it. And we have no idea where it's at. Sure I, it, if you have a rubber, if you had a rubber belt on there and it was bad, you've got to get all that rubber off of there before you can put the new one on. Sure. Right. And like I said, uh, you clean it up, you make sure you look at for cracks, splits, anything, any sign of wear on the thing, and looking for the teeth marks. If you've got that thing where you've been putting the blade in the wrong spot, putting too much tension in, you'll see marks on here where that tooth has been sitting there for a long time. Now you have a, that release bar on there, once you have a tension, you can release it to the first step and then you're not pushing pressure on it all the time. My bandsaw is used almost every day, but if you don't use it for a month at a time and you have the tension on there, it might be better off, you know, if you know you're not going to use it, take the tension off, you know, before you leave it for a month. You know, because it does leave a mark on it. But if you do it, like I said, where you, in the gullet is on there and the blade is not touching it, it's not hurting a thing. You know, I don't back it off, but, you know, you know, it's your bandsaw. You know, do whatever you want with it. So For my big jet, which is a 137-inch uh, blade, when I put that thing on there, it was 20-something dollars for two of them. So I replaced the top and bottom for 20 something dollars. How long do they usually last if you don't have anything? Oh, mine's like 15 years old. Oh, okay. And you know, only one went bad, the other one didn't. And this part of the process, that's what I'm talking about, is if you do have the rubber one, you know, you look for cracks stuff, you're also looking for it to be loose. And, and if you don't take the blade off, you're not going to know it. So you want to inspect your tires, you clean up everything. You're looking for hardware, you're looking for minor stuff that you wouldn't even think of. You know, all the hardware inside of here. You know, this thing, if you don't have it adjusted for your table, you know, all you do is lock down the nut and, you know, when your table stops, you're going to be flush and we're going to cover that in a little bit. But just look at all your hardware, you know, and you're looking at your pulleys. You can, uh, you can look on the other sides. It's your, the belt motor itself. Look at the pulleys between the belt there and uh, your, your fan belts and everything between those. So this is your time to look it all over. So after you've looked at it, you don't see anything wrong, you fix whatever you have on it, then we're going to end up putting on a new blade. And... To put them on the new blade, I backed everything off of here so we're not going to touch. You don't want anything in the way. We're going to get it on there. We're going to adjust the tension and stuff first, and then we'll adjust, you know, the bushings and the cool black stuff. And quick question. So let's say you're looking at a used one, and you're at like a garage sale or Craigslist or yeah, an estate sale or something, and you can't plug yeah. it in. Can you, with the blade on it, can you turn the wheels and sure. hear any of that vibration? Can you do that? You, you can turn the, you can't plug it you in? You can turn the wheels, but you're not going to hear the vibration. With no blade on it, you'd hear anything if the bearing was bad, but mm -hmm. with the blade and all that stuff on it, just to, you know, you had something on If you're hearing a thump every once in a while where one part of the blade is bad, you will not hear it manually. You know, you're going to have to turn that on and, you know, it's not going to be rolling on your rollers or whatever, and you'll hear it thump, 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 but, you know, not on there. So. 
Okay, now, if you have to replace the wheel, I mean, I don't have a video. Um, the polyurethane tires are fantastic to put them in there. We went and got a burner plate, Bob brought over. We put it down there, boiled it in a pan, and we took the tire, <coughs> set it inside the plate for about 10 minutes, and you pick it out, and you put it right around there, stick it in there, and it pops right in place, and it took us just seconds. It was great. We actually showed in a video where we tried doing it without doing it. You get one side caught and you're like that much of a gap before it's even on there. You have to really force it to get it in there. There's different methods. If you are using the rubber tires, you would have to uh, put like screwdrivers or something in between the tires and that, put the glue down and hold it in there, get it in the right place and then let it collapse on there. And it's not gonna work the same way, but with the polyurethane, you put it inside a pan of hot water. We actually boiled it in a hot plate and it, after 10 minutes of sitting there, it just popped right in place and it was so easy. You know, so it, it was a really easy process and then it was done. And there's no sense at that time we're wondering, well, only the top one's bad. Do you want to just change that, not the bottom? It's, uh, why bother? You know, I mean, it's for $20, you replace them both and you might not ever have to do it again. At our age, you're pretty sure we're, we're okay. <laughs> I've been in maintenance all my life and a lot of people that have done that, you know, you can look at something and tell what's wrong with it. Even if you don't even know the piece of equipment, you can figure out, you know, something. And if you've done it enough, it's, it's not a problem. We have nobody assigned in here that's uh, great at doing this, this, and this. You know, so just bring it up at a meeting when you have something like that. And we'll try and get somebody to come give you a hand with it. All right, so now, yeah, this is the point where we said tire change video. We're going to skip that portion. Okay, so after you've checked all the different parts on there, hardware, and everything if you're putting a new blade on which is we're going to put that one back on in a second so if you want to go get it and open it up uh, if you're putting a brand new blade on a lot of them come with oil on the blade you know at this is a good time just to wipe it off you know it's got machine oil on it when they made it so mm -hmm. okay now when you get ready to put it on this is the orientation that's going to go on the pointy part goes down you know I know nobody in here has ever put it on completely on backwards. I have heard of people, I mean, it doesn't take any more than just that to get it on backwards, you know, to get it inside out, so. Taking off the tires, like, or the table, makes it so easy to get it up in place. All right, now I'm gonna tighten up enough tension just to, so I can roll it. But you can look at the blade itself and see where, where it's on onto there. But there isn't anything, you know, you, you can just judge your gap or whatever. But I will show you how to look and see that you're not on that edge here in a minute. Okay, three rollers or you have cool blocks and rollers or whatever you got, all three are separate. So you have to adjust everything here. And backing it off, I wanted to back it off because I didn't want to be in between here and hitting it, affecting it when I put the blade on. Now when I roll it on here, let me try and turn it so you can see it better there. We're pretty much in, in the center. This is the gullet. And we can adjust it. Okay. Now I do have the tension all the way up. I put it on there. Now, if I look at the other side, this is a 3 8 blade. And I'll turn it to, it says, well, I can stop now. I'm, I'm, I'm at 3 8 Exactly. It just felt right. But, okay, you do not want to use that as your total way of setting this up. And there's a couple different reasons for it. First of all, blade manufacturers, when you say your, your blade is, this is like 105. See the cut going on? You can tell Bob was here. You know. Every bandsaw that he gets a hold of at my house or whatever, he writes a blade, blade length. If you're, not, uh, if you're not used to it, you don't change them, you don't buy them. I buy like four or five at a time. But I sent Bob up here one time. He was coming up here. I asked him to pick up a blade. And I'm thinking, well, it's probably 96 and a half. It wasn't. So the best thing you do is before you go to the store, take a picture of this, keep it on your camera or whatever. So when you get there, you know what, which one to get. So okay. So what you're supposed to do Get it to about there, use that as a reference, but you just tap it with your finger. 
And it can, if it only moves about an eighth of an inch, that's the way you want it. You don't want any more play than that, but you want it to have some play. And there's a bar on this one. When the bar's not there on mine, I take it and I put my hand on here and I push it on here. Because here you have, you, on, on this case, we are free. We've got everything backed off this far. So when it goes right looking at tension, so if I hold it here and just use my little finger and tap it, and I'm only going about an eighth inch, that's fine. You know, you don't want it more slack. That's more accurate, and I've watched a lot of videos, and almost everyone to each one tells them, use that other part as a reference, but don't use that for how you're going to set it up to use it. You know, so. Okay, so that puts it over here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the thrust bearings. Thrust bearings are your back bearings, you know, right here. Let's do it on the bottom one so you can see it better. All right, on here, you can see where that bar goes across like that. That's what I was talking about. That's what the jet looks like. It looks the same thing on the inside, but the pivot point that is right here is just held on with the rivet in one hole. So if I push a little bit on this, the other one goes up. So the best way to do is after you have it set, you can look at it, make sure you're at 3 eighths there and then go other side, it's 3 eighths. And if the two are equal, you're good, but it got bumped somehow. And I was, I'm trying to put all kinds of tension on it. It didn't need to be. Okay, so let's go a little farther. <coughs> right there. Okay. Now, that's what you were talking about doing. I've got that, so these teeth are up in the air. You know, it, it, it's actually smaller teeth than there. But I actually got it on there on the wheel, so looking on it like that, it's somewhat centered. It looks, it's pretty close to centered anyway, but I could put this underneath there, and that way I knew that the teeth were not actually touching the wheel. And that, that's how I was setting it up. Here you can't really get anything in between. I can't see what you got. Okay, that deep part right inside of there is where you want that to be just over the edge. So that might be that'd be the only thing that'd be touching on it. You know, that way you have the flat part there, because it, with it curved, what's it that's on there, that is hanging up over the curve and it's not digging into your tire. And then the tracking on this thing, you want to be in the same position. You know, spin it several times after you put it on there. I mean, we're in a good position to stock. You just barely see those things hanging out over the, the part on there. So we're pretty close to being center. Now, a lot of people talk about coplanar between the two wheels. There really isn't such a thing as coplanar on these things. This is factory set up. There's no adjustment on it. People have actually added washers and stuff to there, moving the wheel back and forth, because when they turn it here and they look at it here, they're not exactly the same. They're not made to be the same. They're made to be able to go in there where you're on the center. You concentrate on this one and don't worry about this one being off a little bit. You know, it's not going to be enough that's going to run off the wheel, but so when they talk about cold planer, just, you know, think of something else. Yeah, you know, that's, that's not going to help you. All right, now, now your thrust bearing is the back bearing here. You want to turn these things, you know, we're, I've already loosened it up, but I'm going to move this thing so it comes on here and you want to get so it's just not touching. So when you turn it on here, you're not moving anything, but you want it close enough that you can take your back of your hand and just move it, and it, it'll turn that bearing. That's you know, your thrust bearing? That's, your, your back bearing is your thrust bearing. This one right here. Okay, and you set that first. Now the reason you set that first is if you have this in the wrong adjustment and you're touching it at this point, you know, without, you know, putting any pressure on it like that, if you're touching on there, what it, what it does is it's putting a little pressure on here and it throws off the front. <laughs> okay. So anyway, right now I'm not touching it. That's exactly where I want to be. I'm going to tighten that up. And Ian, can you do that on the top one? Same way. There we go. But then. Just use the back of your fingers, your back of your hand to put a little pressure on. That way you know you're not giving it hardly any pressure. Or you could push hard on it, but you know. okay. So I just tightened it up over here. Okay. And we're still not rolling when it's just the wheel turning. But if we put a little bit of pressure back there, we get some. Okay. Good. When you come over here, we're actually touching a little bit on this one, so I'll, I'll back that off. And it's, it's kind of awkward with it. you have to use an Allen wrench. You know, you have all kinds of systems that you usually just roll it one way or another. Okay. But I'm going to bring this. Anyway, this might throw me off all the way. Okay, I'm going to bring this forward on here before I adjust that. Now you want to be about a sixteenth of an inch 
or so behind the blade, the, the teeth itself on here. When you, when you bring this, this whole assembly moves out together. You know, so this is all set on here. I've got it, can you see the, where we're at compared to the bearing? Okay, okay, so I, I, I brought it out this way and so Robert, are we I getting behind farther. the teeth or behind the gullet? Behind the teeth. Behind the, behind the gullet itself. The whole thing, you want to be about a sixteenth of an inch back. The only thing is you want to keep it so you can hold it flat in between there and the teeth. The teeth will tear up, you know, your bearing itself. Now, I'm going to bring this in closer. And like you, you have to, they rotate. They're eccentric as far as the way, you know, it's not, the hole is not right in the center. It's off a little offset. So when I turn this, it's moving it over towards the blade itself. And, and people measure all kinds of stuff on it. The measurement's not as, as critical as the fact that you want to get as close as you can without touching the blade. Now, right now, I'm still rolling a little bit, so I'm going to loosen this up. Now, I didn't show you, but on this one, you lo I loosened this up ahead of time. That's where you're, you know, once you get on there, you'll tighten it all up, you know, and like I said, it is different on each one. So now I can take this thing, just back it off just a little bit. It's still, it's a fine line between touching and not. Okay, so it's hit, it's missing there, and if I, I push back, I can touch here, push a little bit, I can touch there. So you're real close to it on here. And then you do your, your other wheel the same way. Okay, so right now I'm right in between there. And if I touch a little bit to the left and to the right, I'm hitting the bearing. So I'm right where I want to be. So the next thing is you tighten this up. And then Ian's going to do the top one the same way. You can barely see any type of a gap in the thing. You know, the biggest thing is, and a lot depends on your rowers. My jet's got rowers that are at least twice the size of this, you know, and they're, they're back there this deep. You know, it's like almost like three sets of rollers together. It, it, it's an assembly that's on there. So the, the biggest thing is to look at it. Make, make sure it doesn't rotate when you turn it. And then just using the pressure on the back of your hand, you cool can move away. The cool blocks the same way, so you don't have that advantage of seeing turning. No, the cool blocks, you do not have to bury it. I said you can. You, can, you set up your cool blocks. You can, most people, if you use something bigger than a quarter inch either way on a cool block, you do it exactly the same as this. You know, you do your thrust bearing. And then you would do this. Uh, part of the difference when you run the cool blocks, and some bearings are different, this bearing runs in a wheel like this. And some of them, the wheel is sideways. And you're still going to do the same thing. You know, it'll, it'll rotate against the wheel on there, but the, your bearing is, is like this. Okay. So you take it to the same exact position, the same thing as this. The setup's the same on thrust bearings, this, or um, cool, blocks. cool blocks. Except for uh, you can bury a cool block on like a quarter inch or smaller. Okay, well, after you've brought it forward, tighten it right then so it, that part is, that's what makes it stiff, what he's talking about. Gotcha. You know, you, you take your distance and bring oh, it up sure. to where it's at. That's why this whole you have to tighten there. it up ahead of time so you know you're, you know, stiffen it up. Resaw blade, when you got the bigger rowers and a bigger blade, it's easier to tell. You're still going to be in the same spot. You're going to have it where the teeth are about a sixteenth back of, like, the gall and stuff of the blade. You know, pretty much all you're doing is you're capturing the blade in between. So when you're in there, it's not twisting one way or another. If you've gone through and you're cutting a, you know, you're going out there resawing, not even resaw. If you have a three inch board and you're just ripping it down straight, if that blade's moving side to side, you, you'll see like an S curve all the way down your blade. And even if you have this adjusted perfect, if you've bent that blade sometime, you, you know, you've ruined it. You're not going to change it. You change the set on that blade. And there's different, different times you turn on, and every time it goes around, you're a thump, 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 thump. Well, you put a bend in it. Now, I have had a couple that I significantly bent, and I took a pair of um, adjustable, uh, two sets of adjustables, one on one on one side, and I bent it, and I straightened it out, and it went in there for a resaw blade, and you couldn't hardly affect anything. Now, on a little blade like this, where you're doing the little stuff, it's more critical, if you put a bend in it, you're not going to get it out. You know, you got something that's three quarters inch or half inch steel or, or, you know, deep. You can bend that a little bit and try and straighten it out. But on the little ones, once you put a little crimp in it, it's not going to ever cut right. We didn't clean these off. You know, that would be the part of the process. You use brushes, clean it off and everything, oil them and make them work. 
the, the bearings for the jet are pretty expensive each one and you've got you know three for the bottom three for the top obviously the the one on the back is not as big but the two here are, are somebody about that big i forget what they cost and i thought i was going to have to replace it and then i used the silicone spray on it and it worked really good i'm thinking i should have done that a long time ago and it you know those things don't always happen just because you think about them all right so let's go ahead and put the table back on Okay. A lot of times, it, it, depending on your system, it's easier. Mine, the bar on this side for that on here, stand, is back a few more inches. You can almost not take it off with the blade on there, so which would defeat your purpose to take it off and then have to take it, put it back on, and to do that. Okay, we're going to lock this back in. Those bolts there are kind of a pain because they uh, want to slide back up inside. Past yeah, the well, they just drop fit in there. Yeah. You know, so if you just barely get it started before you're good, but if you push it up, you're not going to have a bolt there to yeah, hold on to. Yeah, it disappeared on me earlier. Okay. Now, we can put this on here, and we can see on here, we are not perfectly straight on there. You know, you have a gap on the bottom, so we can loosen them up, which I'm not gonna adjust the table now. It just wasn't down hard enough is all. Okay, so now we're straight all the way. So we put the part on there to keep this on here. A lot of people do not put that back in there you know, especially I don't because, I, like I said, if I'm going across, I'm catching on there. It messes me up. There's a couple things on the jet that I didn't like on here. The on here you have a the insert in my jet, the 18 inch that's on there, does not fit right on here. It's like a aftermarket almost insert. It's a plastic part that goes in there, and there's a pin in here. So when you go to put it on there, it hits there, and it doesn't work. So even the ones that they sell here. You know, this, this, these are great. This fits right in. You pop it in and you got it in place and you, you're good. But the one for the jet itself, they don't have one that fits on there. Now, a lot of them, like um, Delta, has got a metal plate that fits in there. And it's, it's perfect. But the plastic replacement ones that you get for this thing, I actually have to take and grind off part on here because there's a pin in there. And the pin, that hole is not there in the replacement. Okay, so we're good with it. We don't need the covers open. We'll put those on there. Okay. And I don't want to get to that part there. Okay, so there's another there's other ways that you can test this and just run it into here or two by six, something taller actually gives you better. But if you run it into there like that, and then you come around the back side, it's the same way you do a scroll saw, you come around the back side, it should fit the same way inside of there. You know, all you're doing is making sure you're level with the table now. Using that square is, is really the best method. But, you know, some of the smaller bandsaws, you don't have room for that square. And if you end up using this little India square, you can't really tell too much whether you've got that right. You know, trying to look at the gap with it on here on the different ones, it, it's really hard to tell what you're doing. You can also take it on here, use this type of level, but you put it over here. You just put it over here and put that to the blade. You can tell, you know, that you're perfect on there too. So whatever method, there, you know, use whatever works for you. I didn't mention it, but when you clean the bandsaw, this is what I use for the bandsaw tire to get clean it. You have a brush that rides against the tire. It's a really small one. I'm not sure if you can see that. Can you get that on there? Okay, that's just to keep the solace that's dropping down all the time to keep it from getting in between your, your blade and the tire itself. You know, you want to look at that when you're inspecting your tire to make sure. I've never seen one worn down, but I've seen some that didn't have one. You know, that, you know, especially if you're buying it used, you don't know what the people have changed on it. So you, uh, you just want to inspect that. And this is really good for a soft cloth or something like this. This is not a real 
abrasive one. But if you want to clean your tire while the blade's off with uh, that, and if you do use soapy water or anything like that, dry it all off ahead of time before you put the blade on. Let it all dry. So you don't want to have wet uh, wheel and then put a metal blade on, let it all rust on you. So make sure that there's, you're not doing more harm than what you're doing good there. But if you take your blade off and you are going to put it back on, there's lots of, you can use pitch, pitch RX, I think. Yeah, you can use that, but instead of using that, if you put that inside there, you, you fold it up like that, and you put it inside a bucket or a tray, you can spray it with oven, uh, oven heater. You know, just let it set for like 10 minutes, take it off, rinse it off, and then dry the whole thing off. That does a really good job. That oven cleaner does just as good as pitch RX, and it's nowhere near as much money as buying the pitch RX. One thing that you can use on the back of here is if you're making sharp turns. Now my my bigger jet is used mainly just for cutting straight on wood, so I don't do anything with it. But if you're going to make curves in it, you can take on the back of here with it running a medium. You no, know, no, you can't. Just with it running, just barely touch it on here, just the same as you do with a scroll saw. You're rounding off the blade. You do it on both sides there, and that'll okay, so you can make a little sharper turn. I'm not going to make a sharp enough turn that makes a difference to me, you know. So I'm, I'm not using that method, but that is a true method of making things.